hello and hello and welcome to my podcast or the Vulapik podcast my name is Ida and this is a podcast about knitting um, it's been a while <laughs> I think my last podcast was in was it in November or maybe it was December I did a little vlog or December vlog a video vlog um, but I don't think I've done a podcast since November, probably. And that's because a lot of things have happened for me. Mostly personally. I don't... I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that at the end of the episode. Just because I know uh, not everyone finds that super interesting. Um, some people are just here for the knitting, which is totally fine. I am... Um, I do that myself sometimes. I enjoy hearing about people's private lives on podcasts and other times I just really want to do like watch the knitting content so if you just want to um, look at the knitting that's what I'm gonna start out with yeah I think that's it I live in I'm from Denmark I live in Roskilde just outside of Copenhagen with my boyfriend and our daughter who is two years old and my boyfriend's daughter who is 10 she's with us every other week uh, and I think that's probably what you need to know about me. I'm trying out a, a camera. Again, I feel like I always try out different things, but I'm trying out my DSLR camera once again. I've tried it out a couple of times and never really been fully happy with it, but um, I think maybe I'm, I'm trying another lens today. So hopefully it's going to work out as I hoped or as I'm hoping. <laughs> Yeah, so let's start with some works in progress. No, actually, let's start with what I'm wearing. So this is the Stockholm sweater by Petite Knit. It's uh, a sample knit for me, so I dye yarn. And I had a lovely sample knitter. I don't know if you're watching. Hi, Rege, if you're watching. <laughs> she was knitting this for me. Um, or she, knit she was knitting most of it. I... Um, I didn't send enough silk mohair, so I knit the, like this part of the sleeve, but she knit, knit the rest. And it is knit out of um, Isa silk mohair. Let me see if you can see here. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. It's very hard to describe. It's like black, but it has like a eggplant purplish, very dark purple undertone to it, I would say. So I was using that and then paired with my own yarn, as you can see right here, and which is very hard to photograph as well. It's darker in real life than what you see here. And these two together. Um, this is a 100% non superwash Corydale. It has a very strong twist, so it should be great for knitting socks. Socks, but it's also a very nice um, yarn for garments. I've been wearing this a lot. Um, yeah, and the colorway is Moonstone. But I've been wearing this a lot. Like, um, it's supposed to be for sample knitting, but I just really. I just really, really like it. it. I like it has the drop shoulders, um, as you can see, it's a little oversized, it has a really beautiful neckline, um, <clears throat> and it's just very comfortable. Yeah, I, I can't really say much about how the pattern is to knit because I didn't knit it except, except for the sleeves. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I can't really help you there. I know it has um, a very an interesting way of um, when you do the cast on. I think you do something. I don't know if you can see. There's like a line here. Uh, I don't even know what it's called. Um, when you cast on and you do something fancy. I think Petite Knit has some very, excuse me, burping. Petite Knit has some very um, simple patterns, but they all have very um, thought, like well thought out details. 
um, shape. You, I feel like I have not knit a whole lot of them, but I feel like I follow her on Instagram and I see a lot of people knitting her patterns, obviously. Um, and she always has such great attention to details, like finishing off, um, the finishing of her garments are always really professional looking. Um, so I'm sure this is something that's done with a very specific construction effect in mind. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't think I have any picture of me. Oh, actually, I do have a picture of me wearing it on my Instagram. So you can go there and um, check it out if you want, if you're interested. Okay, so like I said, let's start with works in progress. I have two. I only have two because, well, I have more, but I have two that I'm working on. Um, because... Uh, this past month so in it's February 14th today um, but last month so all of January I had exams and a lot of things going on I'm gonna talk more about that in the end but basically I just there was so many things going on and I felt so um, like stressed out or just like I felt like I didn't really have any, everything under control. Everything was sort of a little out of control for me and so I I just wanted to finish things <laughs> like a lot of the um, things that I um, projects that I had been just laying around for some of them for years I've been finishing off um, just because that felt nice like I could control that and that would be like I would finish it off and I could like cross it off the list and you know that was under control. I think maybe that's why I had the an urge to to work on those things so anyway so I have two um, works in progress excuse me <coughs> my throat is a little sore I just I just um, died so if I have, I have I think I have some red marks on my face and that's just from the dye mask if you were wondering <laughs> anyway so the first thing I'm working on is my C6, C6 I think, sweater by um, Helge Isam. And I've moved on up closer to the camera because my mom says I'm like that I'm way too far away from the camera, or she finds that I'm way too far away from the camera, uh, and that I, you know, you guys can't really see what I'm working on, so I needed to get closer to the camera. And I am listening, of course, to what she says, so that's why I'm closer to the camera today. I hope um, it works out. I hope you like it, Gita. Anyway. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I'll move back a little bit away. Maybe I can just... No. Okay, I think that's good. So this is the C6, this is the cuff, it's a Isaiah tweed, it's a very very lovely tweed yarn. Um, so you use that for the cuff, you cast on, on um, I cast on here on the cuff, I knit the cuff, I knit the sleeves, it has these beautiful very very simple cables, you could totally do these if you were a beginner. Um, and then I am at the neck so this part here is the back of the sweater and obviously this is going to be the neck opening i think i need a, a couple of re repeats more and then i'm gonna knit the, the front of the sweater which is the front and the back is knit the same way uh i've talked a lot about helga isa's patterns i don't want to talk about them too much now you can go back and hear me talking about them i'm not a the biggest fans of her patterns, I, well, I'm a big fan of her patterns as finished projects. I'm not really a big fan fan of knitting her patterns because I find them very confusing, for me at least. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I am knitting the back of the sweater. I did something wrong. I feel like some of these repeats are longer than the other ones, and um, I don't really know what 
happens, I think part of it again is that a lot of the pattern is left to yourself, even though this book is called, oh, I don't have it in here, it's called Knit and it's supposed to be for a beginner or simpler patterns, but yeah, part of it is not for a beginner because a beginner, if you don't have any knowledge of how to knit a sweater, it's hard for you to sort of know what to do, basically. Um, so I think part of what has gone wrong here is um, that once you split up for the two, so the two cables you split up here for the neck, um, the pattern changes. It's hard to, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm not going to go into it, but. Um, I think it's gonna work out. I'm just gonna count how many repeats I've done and I'm gonna do the same on the front and I'm hopefully it's all gonna uh, work out as I'm wanting, I'm hoping to. I really wanted this to be done for this winter. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> um, but then it's gonna be done for fall and that's gonna be fine too. I am, like I said, I'm working with some stash yarns. So one is this beautiful, beautiful um, tweed, which I'm not really that much into tweeds, but this, I don't know, I really like this. Um, so it's a neutral, obviously. It's a gray with specks of brown and black, and I think maybe a little bit of white. No, actually not. Um, and it's like just this really tightly single spun yarn. It's, I don't know. I really like it and I like it the way it's used in a pattern because it's sort of a contrast piece to the sweater um, and I think it looks super pretty and then I am using whoops, these two here so the grey is Camarose it's a 100% uh, Subwash Merino and the white is a 100% Alpaca from Drops so I've had these in my stash for a long time the original pattern calls for an Isaia wool yarn, I can't remember which one, and then an Isaia um, silk mohair. So my, oh this sweater is, oops, sorry, needle on the floor. So this sweater is definitely, uh, my sweater is turning out a lot more heavy um, and a lot more drapey than the pattern um, is because, especially because of this uh, alpaca is just alpaca is just sort of a very drapey yarn and it is also quite heavy so it's already right now I feel like it's a very heavy piece of um, can you see I really love the cable it's so pretty and I love how it's a uh, reverse stuck in each stitch I really really love the the look of reverse stuck in each stitch it's just uh, so pretty I love the cable anyway so it's a little heavier than, um, than what the original version is. Um, the original version also has a um, the bottom piece of the hem is is um, knit again in this easy tweed um, in a ribbing. But I think, or not think, because I'm already doing it. But I'm going to modify the pattern to make it a little more flowy so I want it to be more of an A-line shape and the reason or the way the way I'm trying to do it I'm really excited to see or nervous to see if it works but what I'm doing is I am for the back and the front I am going to I'm doing short rows let me see short rows so every time I have a um, repeat of the the cable I am doing a short row so it's not like a ton of short rows I think that's supposed to be maybe 12 or 14 cables for the neck um, so it's going to be 12 or 14 short rows on the front and the same on the back so it's going to be a little flowy and then I'm not going to do the, the the ribbing for the hem I think I'm going to do a I forgot the name escapes me not a seed stitch a weaving maybe weaving stitch, something like that. I'm gonna try and remember to put in the name of the stitch uh, here on the screen. 
um, so it's not sort of pulling in the fabric but that it just sort of aligns with the fabric and flows out a little bit and the reason I'm doing it is because I really like that style of sweaters on me and also because that way I can wear it on top of dresses I think it looks super pretty with like an A-line um, sweater on top of a dress so that's my plan I think I'm going to go with these two um, for the hem as well instead of the um, tweed maybe I'm gonna like I, maybe I'm gonna mix these I don't know I'll I'm think I'm I think I'm going to do a couple of swatches to just see if it works out with the you know the Oh, yeah, I don't know if you guys can, guys can tell, it's been a long time since I've done a podcast. I will do a swatch to see if the two stitches, stitch patterns will work because um, this is re reverse stockinette stitch and I don't know how many stitches I need to pick up to make it so it, it matches with the, the weave stitch pattern. Yeah, that's my plan for this thing. Um, yeah, but it's gonna be on hold a little bit because I have two sweaters that I I've been wanting to knit one of them for a while. One of them is a cardigan, and I've been wanting to knit this for a long time. Uh, and I'm doing it now, and I just suddenly have had the urge to knit on that or work on that one. And then I have another one that I have not swatched for yet, but that I'm going to. And I have this crazy hope that I can knit both of these before Edinburgh Yarn Festival in six weeks time. And it's not going to happen. I'm probably not gonna, even going to finish one of them in time. But I'm still hoping. <laughs> um, so I'm going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I don't even know if I've told that, said that on the podcast. But I am so excited about it. And this is going to be my first night. Well, not actually, it's not going to be my first night away from my daughter because... I had my birthday, uh, it was on February 1st, and my boyfriend and I went away to Sweden for a night. I just had to um, restart the camera because it only records for 20 minutes and then it turns off. Anyway, so this is going to be my second time away from my daughter. Like I said, my boyfriend and I went away for my birthday in the beginning of this month. And um, but this time I'm going to be away for three nights and it's going to be... My boyfriend who is going to take care of her, which he can totally do, but she's very much a, like, mommy's girl. Always has been, so, um, <laughs> I don't know, I think he's in for it. I, that's, I'm going to say, she's also very determined, very, um, unwilling to compromise. <laughs> and, um, she's also a very lovely, loving caring girl as well but she definitely knows what she wants and doesn't want and she's not afraid of letting us know if she is unhappy with um, a decision that we make that she's not um, in agreement with so I know part of it is also because she's two years old but she she still has more edge <laughs> than other kids her age at least other kids that we are around her age uh, yeah that was a side note. I cast on the cardigan for Edinburgh Yarn Festival that I'm hoping to have finished. I may or may not, but at least I'm working on it now. So the cardigan is called Flown by... I don't remember the name. I'll try and remember to put it in here. Otherwise it will be down in the show notes and you can check it out down there. And it is a beautiful, beautiful cardigan in rib stitch and it fisherman's rib rib stitch just in rib <laughs> and fisherman rib, fisherman's rib and it was a gift from i believe it's a viewer of the podcast that i she gave me i think maybe last year the year before so i definitely mentioned it on the podcast before maybe it was part of my make nine for last year probably anyway so i um I'm actually knitting this in the original yarn, which I don't think I've ever really done before with a pattern. But this time I'm, I had the yarn, and it's I think it's even the same color as as the sample. But 
so I have the swatches. I have a third one, which I think maybe my daughter took and used as a comforter for one of her teddy bears, something like that. But I ended up making three swatches to get to the right um, gauge, or get the gauge that is recommended in the pattern. And so the pattern calls for or suggests that you use a 4.5 millimeter needle and I went up to a US size 10 I don't know how much that is in millimeters but it's two sizes no three sizes up from the original size so it's I had to go up quite a while um, a lot to get the correct gauge and I'm a little nervous because the gauge is in as you can see, it's measured in um, rib stitch and I just feel like it's such a it's really hard to to know if like how the um, designer measured that her gauge like did she pull it out because what I did was just I I soaked and blocked it but I didn't really pull on it I just um, laid it flat down like I squeezed out the water and just laid it flat and then I measured it but if I had pulled it like this obviously I would have gotten gauge um, per the recommended needle size uh, but I didn't so I kind of wish that the pattern like the gauge would be in stockinette stitch even though there's no stockinette stitch in the pattern I just feel like it would make better sense because um, you can't pull or stretch a piece of stockinette stitch in the same way as you can with um, ripped ribbing. So I'm, yeah, I'm I'm curious to see if it's gonna be way too big or too small. Um, but at least I got gauge and I got the row count is, is also on point with the 10 centimeter US 10 centimeter with the US 10 needles. So I'm hoping that since the the row count is is correct, that means that the stitches will be alright too. Um, and a little tip for you, if what I've been doing, especially when I do a lot of of swatches, I will do um, a little knot on um, the yarn that's connected to the swatch. So and one each knot like represents the needle size. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is ten knots on this yarn, and then that way I know that I used a US ten. Um, it's a little harder to do if you are working with millimeters, but I mean you could just look up online what millimeters is in the US sizes, and you can you can do it that way. Just because I feel like I. I tend to forget what size needle needles I'm used for for the swatches that I make and um, that's just annoying when you've made a swatch and it works and then you are unsure about the needle size then you have to do another swatch so just a little tip it um, I think I saw this on Maria's Stitch in Sweden she has a beautiful podcast she was one of the first podcasters that I started following and watching she's doesn't really do a whole lot of podcasting anymore but a couple of years ago she was I think she she had a podcast cast out almost every week um, pretty regularly at least so if you if you don't know of her and you haven't seen her definitely go check all, out her older episodes and her newer ones too but um, there are not as many now she is just I don't know very talented and very good at both knitting and sewing um, and I think she was the one that was um, mentioning that she did this um, and I've done that ever since and it works perfectly also if you know for example if I wanted to knit this again in three years time I would still know okay this is like 10 10 knots means that I used a US 10 for this swatch and that being said, of course, if you want to knit it again in 10 years time or 2 years time, you have to do another swatch because your needle size may have changed, blah blah, all that. So, yeah, so this is, I think this is the f the second one I made. I don't know where the first one is. So there are definite differences in, in these. Uh, 
Anyway, yeah. And the yarn is a... Like I said, I'm using the yarn that the pattern recommends. Oh, sorry. Hitting the tripod. <laughs> and it is a... Let's see. Oh, come on. It is Quince and Co. Um, their, their owl. And it's 50% wool, 50% alpaca. And it's spun like very... Um, it's like very lofty and plump. It doesn't feel like heavy or drapey the same way as, for example, the drops. I know the drops was 100% alpaca too, but it doesn't have that um, sort of loose, flowy texture. It's very structured, I would say, especially considering that there is alpaca in there. Um, and just, yeah, floppy. It's very, very nice to work with. I like it a lot. And I think this colorway is called Tawny, Tawn, Tawny, something like that. It's just a very neutrally um, brown, beige color. Yeah, so, oh, and I have cast it on, as you can see here. This is the neck band. So you cast on with neck, the color first and then you pick up on the side. It's a very interesting construction. I was reading through it last night and I'm not really 100% sure how it's gonna turn into a cardigan, but I'm very excited to see um, see it work, uh, like see how it's going to sort of um, transform into a wearable cardigan. <laughs> so, oh, I've got the yarn on the floor. So those are my those are my two works in progress. I wanted to show you something. Nah, can't see. Anyway, this tea, puka, like peppermint and licorice, is delicious. I also have a peppermint, no, a licorice and cinnamon, which is so good too. I like, I love all oh, everything with. Uh, licorice I love so for me it's just if you like licorice um, I would recommend trying that tea it's very very good okay I can't believe I've already talked for half an hour almost wow okay I think this is gonna be a longer episode than I anticipated so finished objects I have a few to show you um, one is, I'm not going to talk a lot about this, super boring. It's a dishcloth that I cast on in the summer, maybe, maybe even last January, something like that. For my aunt, and I, it just, it's just been laying around and it annoyed me. It's been on a, like, occupying a circular needle that I wanted to use for something else. So I knit it, finished it, and I'm probably just going to use it at home here because I ended up <laughs> getting some of my, my mom um, likes to knit dishcloths so I got some of hers and I just gave them to my aunt because she needed them and I was not getting anywhere with with my little single square here. So that one is done off the needle. It's a uh, cotton yarn from Sustanegrin uh, which is a Danish brand or store I think it's in other countries now too now as well but just very cheap cotton yarn that I've had I still have a lot of it laying around so maybe one day I'll knit more discloche I don't know I really don't like it it's I just find it a little boring to knit a square so anyway the next thing is this little cute you know you can see So, I don't know if you can see what it is. It's a little fox. Um, and that's obviously the face. And then you have the tail. And I think this has been a work in progress for probably a year and a half. Oh no, don't so. Let me see if I can. Okay, let's try. It's messing with the focus at the moment. Okay, here we go. 
I think it's been a work in progress for a year and a half. Um, and I knit this for a dear friend and her daughters. Um, and I, it's been done for at least half a year. I just needed to embroider the eyes on there. <laughs> and then weave in. There was a lot of ends because this is knit out of a lot of different um, scrap yarns that I had. So it's a scarf. Um, I should probably mention that. It's a scarf. Let me see. I can, I can wear it too. Uh, you wear it like... It's a little too small for me. But there's like a little loop in here that you pull the tail through and then um, oh. there we go I don't know if you can see let me see if I can show you so there you go so you have the tail and obviously I hope their necks aren't as wide as my, my as mine, so you can see more of the the little um, fox here. And again, the pattern. I don't even know if I can find the pattern anymore. I'll try. If I find it, I'll put it on this in the show notes too. It's a very simple little cute pattern. Great for scraps and just yeah, wonderful. So maybe next time I see them. <laughs> um, I will give that to them, or if they can't fit it, maybe I'll just keep it and my daughter can wear it when she gets a little older. Um, yeah, but you cast on um, at the nose, and you knit, or maybe you cast on at the tail, I don't know. Cast on at the tail, you knit the tip of the tail, you knit the body. This was supposed to be knit a little long longer, but I ran out of the orange yarn, and so I just decided that I would block the heck out of it to stretch it um, and it worked so and then you embroider the eyes on there very cute little pattern so I think the white yarn is a let low pea yarn the orange is a mix of some knit picks that I have and some pe patterns choice patterns some croy something 100% wool yarn um, and I also think there is some um, cotton in there in the white so I held a lot of different um, yarns together um, in here yeah so that one's done too. That's another one that I just sort of felt like I have to get this done and out of my knitting basket. It's been there for way too long. Uh, and then the third thing that I sort of finished that has been laying around for a while are these socks. Da -da -da -da. I made a, knit a pair of socks. And it's about time because I think for a year or two ago... Um, or a year or two ago I decided that I did not want to buy any commercial socks anymore. I wanted to knit my own socks. And since then this is the only pair of socks I've finished. And <laughs> so I was a little low on socks. Luckily I have a lovely friend who um, has knit me socks. My mom has knit me socks as well. So I do have socks to wear and I also still have some of my commercial socks to wear. But um, this is definitely a needed pair of socks in my wardrobe. The yarn is um, Knit Picks Felici in the Sprinkles colorway. I still have quite a lot left, as you can see. And here it is, the stripes up oh, there. And the heel and the toe is. Um, my hand dyed yarn in the all day all night colorway. I just felt like it sort of matched really well with the rest of the colors. Uh, I knit this with a oh what it's called. It's called. I can't remember the name, but it's when well, you knit a tube and then where you want the heel to be placed, you just sort of knit in a scrap yarn and then you continue knitting, you knit the toe and then you 
go back and you rip out the yarn that you put in, like the scrap yarn, and then you knit the then you knit the um, the heel. I don't know. All the words are gone from my head at the moment. <laughs> um, so that's what I did. Except I didn't know how far to knit on the tube, so I had like the tube knitted, and this obviously was not there. And so I ended up stopping like around here, adding the um, the heel, and then continuing and adding the the toe once it looked like it would be the right length for me. Okay, so the camera died again. Uh, time is flying by. Anyway, so. Let's get back to the socks. Yeah, so I knit them so they fit my foot the best, which is my big toe is bigger than my pinky toe, so I just sort of tried to mimic the way my feet look. They're not identical because I tried out a couple of different things. I figured I might as well um, try out. So this part, this one is a little larger than this one, or wider than this one, or maybe they're no, they're actually pretty much the same. Huh, okay. I thought they would be more different, but now that I look at them, they're pretty even. Um, I found a tutorial on... Uh, is it Nitty, maybe? Nitty.com about kitchen a stitch because I always feel like... I can do knit kitchen a stitch, but it often... It's just not as neat as I would want it to be um, or that I feel like other people do. I don't know if you can see there's definitely a line here where they did the kitchener stitch and I think because I've been pulling the yarn too tight and you can tell and so what I did was I followed that tutorial and the person who made the tutorial recommended that you don't pull on the yarn um, before you knit a considerable amount so it's quite loose and then uh, once you get to maybe halfway through, so I did maybe six or seven of the stitches here on either on both sides, so twelve in all, I would sort of start and um, pull the yarn so, so I got a tension that will looked similar to the rest of the stitches. And I don't know if you can tell, there's a difference here. So if I remember, I'll link to that tutorial. It's very simple, um, but for me it just made... Um, my kitchen stitch looks a lot neater than what they usually do and that makes me happy <laughs> um, yeah what else I think that's it yeah knit picks yarn for the body of the sock and my yarns for the heels and the, and, um, the toes they fit perfectly. There is a difference between the needles. This one is tighter than this one. I actually really prefer the, the fabric of the, the smaller needle. I feel like it's a lot neater than the, than here. There you can see. Um, and I think it, this will wear, wear better. It's definitely, it's still um, nice and soft. It's not super... Um, stiff or anything even though the the fabric is a little tighter yeah. getting really I still have so much to talk about you guys I don't I'm gonna do a second one I think later on because I I'm afraid I won't get through it all anyway so I have a fourth fifth fourth Fourth finished object, and this is it. This is my Tanya by Caitlin Hunter. It is done, and it is not blocked. I hope that once I block it, I hope that once I block it, that it's going to be a little more A line shaped, which is, I think, I'm pretty sure it will. The pattern is um, A line shaped. This. Um, lace down here is very very stretchy as you can see I knit this out of my own yarn in the oh, I forgot the colorway what's it called popsicle colorway on my coidal nylon base you can, can't really tell and I'm just not 
not really feeling I don't like the way the color look against my skin basically so I think before I block it and everything I'm gonna throw it in a dye pot with blue like I'm gonna dye this blue I've decided um, because I think I'll wear it more I knit the I can't remember what size I think maybe it's a size medium or small or maybe it's a small because I originally started out knitting the medium and then I accidentally twisted the cast on once I was almost done with the lace I found out <laughs> and I, as I ripped it out it just looked huge so I went down a size but the sleeves are a size large because a lot of people have been talking about sorry the windows open and somebody's walking down outside oh anyway um so the the sleeves should be quite tight and small according to what people have been writing or saying on Ravelry so I and I don't like sleeves that are very tight under my arms so I need a size large for the sleeves yeah so basically not really any big modifications at all to this pattern it's a very enjoyable pattern very easy to follow um, and hopefully I'm gonna be super heavy with it once it's blocked and it has another color than this this color um, yeah and again this is my own hand dye yarn <laughs> I just don't it just doesn't look good on me I don't I don't like the way it looks on me And the last thing is a project that I didn't work on, but I wanted to show you because I had a lovely test knitter, again, knit this for me, another Caitlin Hunter pattern. This is the Swike sweater, knit in my Sibors Marino nylon yarn. The body of the sweater is knit in Barn Owl, this one right here. Oh, no. Let's try again. So, banal, this is like a grays and um, olive browns and also a little bit of black. And then the yoke, which is where the, the lace is, is a, um, a newer colorway called Satellite, which is gray and purple, purplish gray with the specks of um, burgundy and purple so really happy with this one too this is another sample that I also have been wearing a little bit <laughs> um, because I really like it it's super pretty it's very um, it's a very flattering sweater as well I find even though it's a little tighter I still quite like it so anyway and again I didn't knit it so I can't really say much about um, how it was to knit, except that she said it was a lovely to knit. The battery is getting low and I think I'm just gonna charge it for a little bit and then I am going to be back. I just gave it a 10 minutes quick charge so we'll see how far we get before um, we are out of battery again. So yeah I think those were all my works in progress and all my finished objects that I had to share you share with you. Uh, I so I was talking about Flaum the cardigan how I wanted that for Edinburgh Yarn Festival, but I also really would like to knit a ranunculus sweater by yeah, I definitely do not have prepared <laughs> um, the names of the designers. I'll put that in the show notes, but it's a beautiful um, well, let, let me show you in the little wall. Let me show you the yarn first. So this is the, um, it's how, it's a <clears throat> sweater that that's knit with a silk mohair and um, just a regular woolen yarn. I think you can also knit it without um, the silk mohair. Obviously wool, you can knit everything without the silk mohair if you don't like it. But, um, but I want to knit it with this, this is a knitting for olive. Uh, silk more hair it's very beautiful sagey green and then I have my own yarn this is called dried eucalyptus which is also it's a little darker than what you see here on the screen 
a sort of a green with a brown undertone. So I'm planning to knit the ranunculus, ran, ranunculus with that yarn. I have a friend who's knit one and it's just, it's, I think she's knit two actually. It's beautiful, it has that A-line, very flowy um, texture or texture uh, shape. Um, it has texture on the yoke. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, the designer is, I think she's Japanese, but she lives in Germany, but it's just this sort of, uh, to me it's very, like, Japanese inspired, or the style is, which I really enjoy, so. Uh, maybe, I would really love, maybe I should knit this instead of the flown, because I really would love to wear this for Edinburgh. Yeah, I'll have to reconsider. Um, maybe I'll just cast this on and just work on it like, like a mad woman for the next uh, five, six weeks and then hopefully I can have it done. I'm not a fast knitter, so we'll see. Uh, <coughs> I also have plans to knit a colorwork sweater for my daughter. I, already, I dyed up the yarn for that. I don't have it here, but um, it's called it's Eastland. It, the pattern is called Eastland by... Uh, Susi Hauman, which is, it's a Danish pattern. I'll get more into that once I'm working on it. Oh, uh, yeah, and then it's been Christmas. So many things has happened, obviously. It's been, it's two, 2009, it's um, Christmas happened, New Year's happened, exams happened, I finished my internship, a lot of things have been going on. But um, I had a couple of, oh my goodness beautiful. I'm just gonna pick this up. There's some yarn fill on the floor. Um, so for Christmas I had two different Christmas calendars. Um, so look at this. All this yarn. Da -da. Anyway, so I had um, a calendar from Unling, which is a Danish um, yarn company and then I contacted a, a Colleen which is uh, a lovely person or a beautiful person who lives in uh, Canada? Now I forget if it's Canada or the US. Northern America and she dyes beautiful yarn and I've been admiring her for a long time and then I thought okay I'm just gonna write her on Instagram to see if she would be interested in doing a Christmas Christmas calendar swap with me and um, I did a, if, for those of you, you who don't know, I did a Christmas calendar, Vulapig Christmas calendar this um, last year where I um, dyed up four different 100 gram skeins of yarn and then people opened them up on the um, the four Sundays leading up to Christmas Eve um, and actually I'm gonna add at the very end of this long long podcast I'm gonna add a little snippet where I show off the yarns and my thoughts about them so if you're interested just you can it's gonna be at the end of this episode but anyway, um, so I asked her if she would be interested in doing the same, so swapping for um, 100 gram skeins of yarn with me. And um, I didn't send the Christmas pa or the the Christmas calendar that I sent out to people um, who, um, to her. I made another one for her. Um, but and we sort of agreed on that we would like to try different bases from each other, and that we could just sort of we could choose whatever we wanted to send to one another and she just um, she sent the most perfect perfect skeins of yarn I would say I really really enjoy these so let me see there we go so this one was the first one it's called White Christmas and it is so gorgeous look at this I love that it's Christmassy but that you could still use this year round so it's not like you look at it and say, oh, you know, that looks like a Christmas tree with light bubbles or something. It's a very bad example, but you know, it's you can use it for all year round, but it's definitely something that you could also use for a Christmassy pair of socks or something like that. 
so pretty. So she said this was the first one I got. And then I can't remember actually the other ones, which one was. This one is like a solid, very peachy, beautiful, beautiful. Um, this is a DK weight, 100% merino. So pretty. I think I want to knit my daughter a, we a vest for this, uh, out of this. Super pretty. And then she also sent me this. Um, this is another sock yarn. It's called Hints of Autumn. And I actually did write. So we were talking about, okay, what colors do we like? Um, and is there anything specific that we like from one another? And I mentioned this one, which is called Hints of Autumn. Uh, that I've seen on her Instagram and I just really love it. She also makes really pretty um, sort of calming beautiful snippets of um, her day-to-day -day videos that you can find here on YouTube that are very calming that I kind of I really enjoy watching. They're very short like two to five minutes um, but I actually sometimes I will just say play all and I'll just sort of have it playing in the background while I do other things. It's just um, a nice little thing to have in the background and instead of, I don't know, the TV that's just going for no reason. So this is called Hints of Autumn and then she sent me this. Oh my god, I love this one too. I really like this color. Bluey, blue uh, color with green. Um, so pretty. So it's a silk mohair. This is called Van Sand. Yeah, so I got those. I don't know. Look at this. It just made me so happy. I really, of course, we all like receiving things, but it was just so special every. Um, this is a look at every um, Sunday to have this like a little package to open up. It was just really nice. And I, I so I had this, but I also had another. The other app and calendar, calendar from Unling. Here. This is such a pretty color. They had, you could choose between a um, multicolored or a um, neutral colored. And I got the multicolored ones. Um, let me just show you some of the yarns. So they. There were different yarns, and they also had a pattern, so you could knit. Um, oh, you could knit um, if you wanted. You could knit something with the yarn um, straight away. I have not knit any of the patterns. I want to knit something else with these. Um, they're so pretty. There was also a yellow, but I've used that already for a um, headband, which I actually knit quite a lot of headbands that I didn't show off. I finished the headband that I was working on last time for myself in a white and I knit three other ones for my friend and her daughters. I've also knit a Stockholm hat by Petit Knit for Jakob, my boyfriend, which um, turned out way too big. It's just too big. I don't know what I did wrong. I used another yarn. I used the Camerose 416. Maybe that's it. It just grew crazily. I threw it in the dryer. It shrank a little, but it just, I don't know. I did something wrong with it because it seems like everybody else loves that pattern. I just, for me, I don't know, it didn't work out. He still wears it, um, but he's not like, I think he mostly wears it because I knit it for him and he feels like he has to wear it. And because he requested that I knit it for him, basically. I forgot to mention that I got this little mini along with the with the White Christmas thing. So, um, yeah. Sorry, I'm rushing a little bit because it's 3 o'clock and it's going to be dark soon. And my daughter's going to wake up. She's taking the longest nap ever. I don't know. My boyfriend's home, so he's going to take her. But I think she's still sleeping. I'm pretty sure she is. Otherwise, she would be banging on the door asking to come in. Um, so we need to. Oh my god, she's never gonna fall asleep tonight. <laughs> and then I had a arrange a Christmas swap, and I actually ended up 
so it's, it was a swap where you sent a skein of yarn to your swap partner along with a little bit to drink so it's like some tea um, and a little treat so it could be candy or chocolate or something like that and I ended up having three swapping partners because I thought okay I would really like to have um, I really want to take part in it and so there were two left so they could have had each other but then I wouldn't have any swap partners so I decided I would just swap with both of them and then I ended up having forgotten a person who then came back to me um, and said oh have you you know I haven't received any, my swapping partner yet so I ended up swapping with her too sorry Celia <laughs> she's uh, I know her she's from Denmark um, not that I know everyone in Denmark but I know her so I ended up having three um, lovely extra Christmas gifts for me waiting under the tree on uh, 24th and this is the yarn that I received from um, from the lovely ladies that wanted to swap with me so this is oh I'm just gonna go over it, over it quite um, quickly so this is from Spain and it is by Greta and the Fibers. Just a beautiful blue and some lovely minis to go with it. And then this is from Denmark. And this is by Friesenmark, who is actually also um, going to be at Fiber Folk, which is a. I know I'm all over the place. I do apologize. It just things sort of pop into my head and I just start talking about them. But um, I am arranging or organizing a fiber festival, a wool festival here in Roskilde together with Jakob. This is, will be our third time arranging it, organizing it. And this um, brand, Friesenmark, will be there. And they, um, source the yarn in Peru. Um, and they go down there as far as I know and sort of make sure that everything is up to a certain standard I think they source it from small herders and small families so the money sort of directly goes to them um, and is it is sustainable this is a 100% baby alpaca beautiful beautiful blue lovely soft yarn um, so Oh, so I got this one. This is, like I said, from Denmark. And then I got these two 50 gram skeins of Toku wool, which again, actually quite funnily enough, I I reached out to them to hear if they would be interested in uh, participating in Fiber Folk um, because we've been trying to sort of reach out and see if you can find some um, someone who would be interested in participating outside of Denmark just to get um, new people joining the festival and to, you know, bring interest um, uh, to the festival from people outside of Denmark. And um, she, um, they were too busy, but it was quite funny that I then ended up receiving some Tuku wool as part of the swap. And it is, I really, really like this yarn. I don't know, it's very rustic. It almost feels like there's still some lanolin in there, but it's not... I mean, it's not really, like, very prickly, I wouldn't say. It is just, I don't know, beautiful, smelly, in the good way, <laughs> um, woolen yarn, as you can see here. And I really like the color, too. Um, I don't know what to knit with it. It's 100 grams, so maybe it will, again, be a vest for my daughter. She is wearing a lot of vests that's definitely what we use the most for her um, and it would be a lovely warm um, yeah piece for her to wear this is so pretty yeah so I'm really excited about this one too okay so I have three minutes left I don't I think I'm gonna stop now because I feel like I'm when I record for more than half an hour, I just my brain just doesn't function as well. I'm very impressed with the people who can 
podcast for like an hour or two hours and I know this is gonna be more than an hour and I know that you feel it <laughs> because I'm so um, all over the place at least that's what I feel like I am maybe it's not as bad once you watch it um, so but I wanted to just mention a few few things so I will be attending a couple of markets with my um, yarn some of it is up here um, I'll be attending Hesley Ostrangefest here in Denmark on the 24th of February, so that's in 10 days. I really need to start dying up more down for that. And then I will be attending Fiberfolk, like I said, which I arrange with my Jakob, um, also here in Oskiller, that's on the 6th and 7th of April. I really hope you guys will come. We have such a great lineup of people. We had so many people applying. We had to turn down people. We were thinking about like maybe renting a bigger space, but it just seemed too much. We have um, some people who are gonna come and do a couple of talks, and we have a workshop. Um, yeah, we we have a lot of ins exciting things. So yeah, um, really nervous about it too, which I talked about also earlier. I we get both of us every time. We hope that people are like it. We hope that the you know people who are paid to stay there to stand and sell their things that they find it you know worth it for them we obviously hope that people who come to visit like it and like what they see so <coughs> but that's part of it it's also um, what's what makes it ex makes it exciting um yeah and then I I said I was would talk about personal things I don't think I'm gonna get too much into it except that I would say that I back in October, November, I had my internship, and after that, um, I would say why the internship wasn't stressful at all, but I feel like after I sort of ended that internship and it started being, it was in the beginning of December, I just got really sort of s stressed symptoms. I was really, I couldn't remember anything. Uh, my short-term memory was just out the window. I was very sort of short-tempered um and other things and Jakob was like setting me down said you really need to slow down now so I promised him that I would not do any dyeing for the shop basically I would sh I wouldn't do any shop re related work um the shop has been running but I not really done anything um except packaging orders when they've um I've had a little bit of orders here and there but I haven't really done anything sort of uploading, taking pictures, dyeing yarn, labeling, drying, all of that, I've just left out. We agreed that I would stop, um, I wouldn't do anything until after it, the exams, which was great. <laughs> so that meant that uh, usually when my daughter slept, I would work, but I made sure that during her nap times in the daytime, I generally just went out with, for a walk with her um, because that way I was sure I wouldn't, wasn't home and I couldn't do anything work related and I would get fresh air and I would get some um, just not a workout but I would get moving battery died again <laughs> so back again so yeah I would get fresh air I would get I would be moving around and just sort of I would listen to a podcast or something like that that was really good for me. I did a little bit of work in the evening, but that was like schoolwork. Um, yeah, I really tried to sort of take care of myself. I um, didn't do a whole lot of Instagram, which can be stressful as well. And I find stressful um, at time, at least at times. Um, and then uh, at the end of December, I was feeling better. Um, but then I, you know, I had four different five different papers exam papers that i needed to write and i had two um, oral exams and my mom came for four days in january to take care of esther um, she is home with me and um, so i that was stressful as well because i knew i had to write a lot of exam papers but i didn't have the time for, to it because she, she was home with me and she um, is two years old and doesn't really make me do a lot of work when she's awake <laughs> um, so she came and took care of her and that was really nice and um, again I just had my last exam last week and both of those exams went so well 
<laughs> which was great. I mean, I, I just, I really just wanted to pass the exam. Yeah, so now that's over and I still have half a year of school left, but um, I have like winter holidays until the end of January, February. So I have a little bit of time to die yarn and sort of get the business side going. Um, and we also have used a lot of time on Fiber Folk, uh, Jakob and I, that takes up a lot of time too. So yeah, I just wanted to say that because sometimes I get messages from people saying like, how do you do it all? Like, I can't believe that you can like, you have a business and you have, you organize the yarn festival and you have your daughter, daughter home full time and you study full time and that just that's just incredible. And I don't do it all and my house has always, it's the biggest mess you could ever imagine, always. Our house is a mess, it's not very clean, um, have to prioritize what we use our time on, or what I use my time on. Um, so we, um, I'm not doing it all, obviously, and it has been too much, it is too much. So yeah, I my daughter starts uh, daycare uh, or preschool on March 1st and uh, that's gonna give me some free time during the day I think we, we're gonna play it by ear to see how she does but um, here in Denmark you we like daycare and preschool is always full-time at least in, in where I live we can't get part-time anything so basically she could go there for 40 hours a week which she's totally not gonna do at all but um, but I'm hoping maybe she can stay there three days a week and then we would still have two days a week to just because I love I still I love having a home it's such a privilege and um, really for me I find it very important when she's still so young that that I'm the one that gets to be with her the most and that she's not going to be in some institution with a lot of other kids and yeah I could talk about that a lot I don't think that's good for small kids I also know that um, I'm in a position where I am. I have the poss possibility, to be t possibility to be home with her, and that not everybody has that possibility. And I'm no, I know that. So anyway, so hoping to have her three days a week, and then I can get some work done. Uh, yeah, because I also have to start writing my bachelor um, next month. Is I think when's when we start doing that, and I have. On top of that, I have two other subjects that I need to write and I also have to do um, some papers and exams for that come summer. I'm gonna pop in the video of my the advent calendar from last year, so 2018. You can see the colors there. Um, there are actually five colors, but you can see the four that I ch You can see all five, but I only chose four of them, of course, and I talk a little bit about that. And yeah, I hope to be back um, sooner this time that I have. I hope maybe next month I will make another podcast. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I know this episode has probably been a little bit all over the place, but that's, I think that's how my brain is at the moment. So I hope you could follow along and it's not too rambly. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.
it is mid October now, so I am coming to you from the past because this uh, are these are the contenders for this year's advent calendar. So obviously you won't see this until the end of December this year. But I just wanted to talk about the colors and my thoughts about them before they go out into the wild. So at first, the first color that I dyed up is this one, which I'm calling Hot Cocoa and Tea Light. And it's just uh, browns with yellow and some blue specks. It's just a very warm and um, sort of wintry colorway in my opinion. And I thought that would be great for as the first skein in the advent calendar. And then I dyed up this one right here, which is a pink um, with some lighter browns. I don't know if you can call those browns. Let's see, brown bits. There are no specks in this one. This is just a highly variegated um, skein. Well, not this one actually doesn't look as highly variegated, but it does have different pink and um, beigey brown tones. I'm calling this one Clara and the Nut Cracker. Cracker. And Clara and the Nut Cracker. That's what I'm trying to say, which is a ballet that usually runs in December. I've never seen it, but I just thought this would be perfect for Clara. Um, and then, so these two I'm pretty happy with. And I was, they were, these were my first two skeins that I dyed up. Then I dyed up this skein right here which I don't have a colorway for or a name for and I was thinking about dyeing something that would represent the North Pole or the sky above Santa's house something like that maybe Northern Lights um, because I want the colorways I want to give them all colorway names that are Christmassy um, in some way or another or just like this is hot cocoa and tea lights, but this sort of has the atmosphere of Christmas and coziness and hygge. Um, but I don't want them to be Christmas colorways as in, in that the colors are Christmassy. I want them to be, I want people to be able to use these year round. But I dyed this up and I looked at these three together and I just, I wasn't sure about it. I. I like it. I like it as a colorway. I just didn't know if I wanted it as a part of the advent calendar. And then I ended up dyeing up this skein right here, which is a dark blue um, semi-solid with very, very few specks of sort of a purpley pink um, color. This almost looks a little red. There, it's. It's very subtle, there are not a lot of them. Um, so it's quite a neutral colorway, I would say, uh, in the sense that there are not a lot of um, contrast in between the colors. There are blues and blacks in here, basically. Um, and I looked at these together and I thought, they're just too, too similar. I, I didn't like the way they looked together, basically. And so I ended up dyeing a fifth skein right here this is this one right here it does not have a colorway name either and I really love this one it's a sort of a blush base with um, golden kind of olivey browns and there are some blues and purples in here or pinks and purples um, and so I ended up now I have these five, and I'm thinking about these two. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep in the in the calendar, and so I think um, this is what I'm gonna go with. I kind of like that combo. I like how they, if people want it, they could combine them. I feel like they um, have enough colors from each other that you could use them not in a fade that will probably be a little too much but you could use them in a Stephen West shawl for example if you wanted something that um, sort of had a little bit of of the same colors so this is blue obviously and there are blue bits of blue in here a little bit of blue here this one has some pinks which this one does too so they would work together as well 
Um, these three would make a really pretty shawl, I find. It would be so pretty. But you could also use these two together. Um, these two, I guess the blue could actually go with all of them because there are some bits of blue in here as well. So I think this is what I'm going for. I did also kind of look at this, which I mean, they could also be a nice combo. I find they because this has some blues as well, but then I, I just feel like they are too similar. These are very light, these three, um, and also cooler. Um, they all have cooler undertones. So this one brings a little more warmth in there, even though it may be the odd one out. I still think this is what I'm going for, but I mean, this could also make a really pretty shawl. They're just a little too similar, I, I think, so yeah. I'm still deciding, but right now I'm pretty set on this on this um, combination right here. I think it's going to be the one that I'm going for.